Federal Bank, which did reasonably well in quarter three too. We didn't speak to them then, but remember, it's sitting on uh, a sizable chunk of non-performing corporate loan book at the end of uh, the third quarter. What impacted the lenders' numbers uh, slightly on the other side were Kerala floods um, uh, in, in one way, but the bank uh, management's uh, rough thought seems to be and it's confidence about that the worst is behind them. And what's giving them this confidence? Is it uh, the healthy growth and fees, uh, or is it something else? And wh how is the sector looking like? Let's get all of those questions answered from the bank's MD and CEO, Shram Srinivasan. He joins us right now on the show. Mr. Srinivasan, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, we two months done into quarter four as well. Uh, if you look at the trajectory of the second half, for federal bank and for the banking system in large, are you a lot more confident than what you were when the island first crisis broke out? Uh, Neeraj, thank you. I heard you say the introduction that we had a large corporate loan. I don't know which one. We really didn't have anything for long. We've not had any of those issues. But that said, uh, our momentum for the financial year and for Q3 and for Q4 continues to be quite similar to how we've seen the last, say, 12 odd quarters of credit growth. Uh, the shape of the growth we are trying to alter from being, uh, as you would have noticed, we had very good growth for many quarters on corporate and retail and other businesses were catching up. Now retail is taking over higher than even corporate growth by design. So the mix and the shift is uh, more visible. We will try to get to 50-50 wholesale retail over a period of two years. Right now it's 57.43 and growth rates for all these businesses are north of 20. Uh, corporate was growing at mid 30s, early 30s. I think we will bring it down to mid 20s. Uh, so the shift will be more visible. Okay, um, just wondering. Uh, so, okay, but my reference would have been to uh, select uh, issues that would have cropped up, for example, slippages, uh, which arguably were high. Uh, town 10% on a quarter on quarter basis, but uh, full year slippages, I reckon, would still, Mr. Srinivasan, exceed what uh, the earlier guidance or the earlier thought process was. Is that a reasonable estimate? Or are you uh, believing, as two months have gone by in quarter four, that the numbers could change and change for the better? Uh, we had said that the flood's impact could be about 150 to 200 crores. Uh, that may be the only sort of material difference to our earlier observations. Otherwise, we are on trend and improving. Okay. So the earlier beginning of the year and the intra-year, August middle was when the floods. So we held out our first uh, sort of feedback 20th August, almost immediately after the event and our assessment then and now uh, is pretty much along the same lines. We think the consequence of that would be about 150 to 200 crores. And that's how it's been the last two. A little better this quarter, but it's in that zone. Interesting. So, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, would it be fair to assume that some of the uh, headline stuff for Federal Bank in terms of what could be potential issues are behind you? As I read, uh, or, I mean, and as you've stated in the past that the island face exposure is all standard, I presume that all Kerala related downgrades are done. Uh, you've probably stated in your con call that you do not see any kind of issues on the NBFC real estate portfolios as well. So the large headline issues that could come about are all behind you. Is that a reasonable estimate? Yeah, I mean, whatever we said holds true. So all the three things that you pointed out are true. ILFS, we have, I mentioned about 240 crores is the total exposure to the SPVs, which are performing completed projects, either toll or annuity coming in. And they are, uh, the biggest one is an amber, or about 195 odd crores out of the 200 crores is uh, an amber account. And the recent NCLT yeah. announcement makes it even more clearer. But that, that said, the money is in the account and we've got payments up until the last, uh, last month. Uh, so yeah, ILFS, that's the update. NBFCs, we've never had any major exposure of any concern. And we, where we started seeing some stress, we were actually unwound some of it in Q3 and that will continue as the repayment schedules kicks in. Uh, on Kerala, I've already mentioned, right? I mean, the flood-related impact has been well addressed. 
Okay. So I mentioned three things, which were the headline stuff. Uh, you mentioned that all of those three are as per what you predicted. Is there something that I've missed? Is there something that uh, you would watch out for as a bank management? We'll come about the growth numbers as well, Mr. Srinivasan, in a bit. I'm just trying to get the sense around asset quality and slippages right now. Nothing, uh, nothing uniquely different for federal. We are sort of in the market. We keep watching every development that is happening. Uh, at this point in time, I can only say the guidance that we've offered at the beginning holds, except for this 200 odd crores of Kerala related. We haven't seen any adverse outcomes. If anything, it's an improving trend. And we've addressed some of our erstwhile uh, NPA or erstwhile sold to an ARC even more materially. And at the appropriate time, we'll share the final outcomes. We are in deep discussions. So it's only a better outcome from where we are. Okay. Um uh, the, the other bit is, the, once the issues are settled with the growth numbers, and they looked reasonably okay, yeah, loan growth was healthy, CASA was stable, I believe f there was steady improvement in fees seen. Uh, has the better part of quarter four, four shaped up as well or better than quarter three? The improvements that you've seen are uh, not one-off in nature. They have not been... Uh, benefited by any sort of sort of uh, 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 non-regular transaction. So I think that's the run rate and we believe that we are on course and invariably March ends up being the most crucial month in, a, in the 12 months and in specific in Q4. And we are all sort of uh, in line for delivering those uh, good outcomes in March. I mean, I'd be wrong to sort of incrementally share anything differently, but yeah, we are on trend. Our momentum is on guidance, and uh, we haven't slacked off on anything, and unlikely we will. Right. Mr. Srinivasan, good morning to you. Uh, Devina here. And, you know, I want to shift focus from Federal Bank's financials right now, which we've already discussed at length, uh, you know, and focus a little bit more on uh, the NBFC space. So your NBFC, the subsidy that you have, that's Fed Bank Financial Services. Uh, I mean, chatter in the market up until now has been that, you know, the, the vacuum that NBFCs is, have left, banks are slowly starting to fill in. Is that something that's happening at your end? Uh, our NBFC, as you know, has had an investment partner, uh, True Not has come in as a JV partner about six months ago. We've brought in a very senior leader as the MD of the NBFC. We've got a very good bunch of new guys who have joined joining. And uh, they are really on, uh, for want of a better word, on steroids and doing a great job. And uh, in some sense, the parentage helps them to be very competitive in the market. And they are very retail and granular first focused business. So our momentum there is good. So between the bank's retail foray and the NBFC in its new avatar uh, going into the market, into deeper geographies and select businesses, I think the formula looks good. They are not at this juncture in any form uh, impacted by the overall sort of talk on NBFC because they are way below the threshold of any kind of big ticket lending or uh, big ticket exposure. So I think the, at this juncture it looks quite good and I believe they are organized for good growth. So when you say the big ticket exposure is slightly more muted, uh, does that change or is that, uh, is, is that a stance that you have taken keeping in mind the market environment right now? Because for some of the other NBFCs as well, disbursements have come up because they are ca cautiously taking that stand. Uh, FedFina, which is our NBFC, like I said, is a very heavily retail-led retail, retail -led NBFC and they are... Uh, continuing to grow on that count. And I don't see them slacking off. Uh, the book is barely 2,000 crores, right? So uh, the ambition there is to grow it manifold over a five-year period. And that's how the design of the organization is. And I think they are putting in everything, the architecture to make sure that that growth of 30-odd percent every year is possible, actually more. And that will happen uh, because the structure, the focus is very retail. Okay. Mr. Srinivasan, one final uh, question really from our end. And I would want you to wear your industry hat and tell me, the common conversation that comes up off late uh, with almost everybody who analyzes banks is that corporate-facing banks in general over the course of the next 12 to 18 odd months will see a significant 
up upping in their in the in the, in their accounts simply because the credit costs will come off and come off materially and will start showing in the books difficult to time from which quarter but it will happen uh, how uh, is the street right in being so bullish and is there a sense that you can give us about how large could this gain be from when it could happen for the space at large maybe for federal bank too but for the space at large uh, yeah, I think you know, the point you're uh, sort of mentioning is if the fact that banks had choked off incremental corporate growth because the credit costs were higher, that is true. Now, credit costs will trend down and as resolutions come in, maybe longer, but it will come in over the next 12, 18 months. These will only add up to the net outcomes and to that extent, the uh, numbers will get a little more flattered having had some problems in the last two years. Uh, and if and post-elections, if there is active pickup in the economy, uh, I would believe that there would be very significant uh, p and gains near term. But if you peel off everything and look at it on a more steady state and sort of normalize for credit uh, events in the past or the likely bonanza in the near future, good, well-run corporate-facing uh, banks will see growth. And uh, I do think for us too, that is very true. Uh, we've put in a remarkably good architecture for corporate. As you've seen over the last three years, the growth has been very handsome. And we're mirroring that in our commercial banking space. And I think that will continue. And we have less of the big ticket problems. So I think the space is open for us and to some extent, all the big names that are sort of on a resurgent mode. So I'm very optimistic and bullish on how the next, like you said, you can't time the quarter, but before long, that will be a reality. Before long indeed. Great chatting with you today, Mr. Srinivasan. Thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us.